Hey reefers, welcome back to Grand Canyon Reefs and today we're touring one of the nicest mixed reef tanks in all of Arizona. And don't forget, at the end of this year, I'll be doing a free frag giveaway of Little Shop of Horizoas, shipping included to anywhere in the United States. And all you have to do to enter is be subscribed to the channel. Now let's get into the video. So this is Dan's mixed reef tank in the Phoenix, Arizona area, and his tank has been up and running for just over two and a half years now, but some of the fish and coral and some of the equipment have been brought over from the previous tank, which is running for over five years. This current tank is a water box crystal peninsula, the 5526, and it's roughly around 140 gallons in total system water. The tank is being lit by four Radeon G4 Pros, all with the diffusers, and they are the same lights he's been using for the entire duration of the tank, and I'd say they're working absolutely great. And for flow, he's using two MP40s, and on the far end of the peninsula is a gyre blowing over the top of the tank. The idea for this aquascape came from wanting to mimic the idea of like different bonsai trees, but also being able to move and relocate the different coral flag frags around as they grow. So that's why he has different small ceramic domes kind of on the ends of the different tree branches, if you will. The rest of the equipment running this tank is pretty standard across most reef tanks. However, the location of the sumps is much more unique than most. And yes, I do mean multiple sumps for the same tank. So the sump immediately below the tank, it's a combination of half filtration and half extra storage for frags and corals. And in this sump area you'll find his dosing pumps, ceramic media blocks, the filter roller and frag basket, which is now currently housing two rare bubble tip anems and a clam. And this filter roller is, I believe, the Clarice SK5000, which he's been using for years, he says, and absolutely loves it. And remember when I mentioned multiple sumps? Well, the second sump is in a separate bathroom behind the tank. So this extra bathroom serves as a remote sump area and the water flows through the wall into the sump under the sink. In here houses the skimmer, algae reactor, more ceramic media, and the return pump. A piece of equipment that I personally love is this skimmer net cleaner, which uses water to periodically clean the skimmer cup and then sends it down the sink drain. Gotta love automation. Now that we've covered the general equipment that keeps this beautiful tank running, let's dive into some of the additives that he uses to maintain this many mixed corals. Dan's tank is fueled by mostly all Tropic Marin products. He follows the Tropic Marin DIY plan, which includes carbocalcium for calcium and alkalinity, biomag for magnesium, trace A and K for trace elements, and he also uses a mini fridge under the tank that houses and feeds Red Sea 80 plus daily. For salt, he's using the Tropic Marin Pro Reef Salt now, but he's only going to be using that until he runs out of the next two boxes, and then he'll be switching over to Fauna Marin. And the reason for this switch is that the Tropic Marin Pearl Reef Salt mixes near natural seawater alkalinity of around 7.5, which is slightly on the lower side for some corals like SBS. And I found this funny to hear because that was essentially the same reason that I switched away from that Pearl Reef Salt around a year ago when I also started keeping SBS.
And now, the most important part of the tank, the livestock. Dan's fish are by far some of the healthiest and nicest that I've seen. His personal favorite is the iconic yellow tank due to how long that he's had him and how fat and healthy he is. As you might be able to tell, he also has a passion for wrasses, and my personal favorite fish in his tank is the yellow-tailed tamarind wrasse, which was incredibly hard to film and get good videos of, but is beautiful and not a fish that you see too commonly in the home aquariums. An interesting fact actually about that fish is that it took Dan over a year before he was finally eating pellets. Dan's fish selection also highlights the importance of utilitarian fish, as he keeps many wrasses for pest control and the yellow and silfin tang for any algae that might pop up in the display. The only fish that don't eat algae or pest are the clownfish, purple firefish, and the flame angel. The fish are fed daily via the auto feeder located above the power head, and he feeds frozen mysis a few times a week. When I asked him about any new additions in fish to the coming year, he mentioned that he's on the hunt for a female bellus and a male one on the angelfish, but they're incredibly hard to find. Now that we've talked about the fish in this beautiful reef tank, let's talk about the other livestock, corals. Dan estimates that there are roughly 200 corals in this tank, but I might argue that that number is even higher. Like honestly, pause the video just for a second and count the number of corals in a small section and you'll quickly realize how packed the tank actually is. Corals of every kind cover virtually every single inch of the tank. From softies like mushrooms, zoas, and star polyps, to LPS like Ganeopora, Scolemia, and Euphilia, to SPS like Montiopora, Acropora, and more, I would honestly have a hard time naming one coral type that's not found in this tank. There are even animals like large clams, which technically aren't corals, but invertebrates called mollusks, or better known as shellfish. Dan's personal favorite coral type is torches, as you can see by one of the nicest and largest torch gardens I've ever seen. But he did also make sure to mention he loves his OG bounce, which he's been growing for over six years. And when I asked him about any new corals he's on the hunt for in the new year, he mentioned he's always looking for new exotic mushrooms, which he has spread all over the tank, and maybe a few more torches and SPS frags if he can make room and clear off some of the zoas that have just taken over. After I had finished filming the tank and corals, I wanted to pick Dan's brain for a few minutes and ask him a couple questions that I guess people watching the video might also like to know. First, I asked him his favorite aspect of the tank setup, which he answered with two words, the location. He loves how it fits perfectly into the corner of the room, and it also allows him to have a remote sump behind the tank and a separate closet next to the tank, which is able to house his RODI and salt water. When I asked him something he hated about the tank, he laughed and pointed right at the sand bed. He mentioned he hates how much of a nutrient trap the sand bed has become, and since some areas are 2 to 3 inches deep and have corals placed on top, it makes it virtually impossible to clean those areas. Next, I asked him about any big changes or plans for the tank in 2023, and he again mentioned the sand bed. He's planning on removing the sand bed as it is likely serving more negative than positive, and his only remaining decision at this point, before he starts the removal, is whether to have white or black starboard on the bottom. So be sure to let us know in the comments below, do you guys think a bare bottom tank looks better with a white or black bottom? And lastly, I asked for one piece of advice or a tip for fellow reefers watching this video to help achieve a tank like this. His response, trial and error. Trial and error is inevitable in the path to success, and if you want to have a mixed reef tank, which Dan and I both believe are to be the hardest, then you must accept that error will happen along the way, and there's always a lesson to be learned from the errors. Until one day, you have a mixed reef tank just like this, or hopefully, even better. Thanks, and happy reefing!